could this be the greatest U.S. Olympic basketball team that we have ever seen? I know it sounds crazy. We've seen the dream team. We've seen the redeemed team. Even that 2012 roster was insane. But this 2024 squad is absolutely stacked. No starting lineup yet, but there's at least a handful of different lineups that you couldn't be mad at. Just imagine though, a starting lineup consisting of Steph Curry, Anthony Edwards, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Joel Embiid. Switch out Ant with Kawhi or Jason Tatum if you want to. It's tough to even put on paper this squad up against the Dream Team, just because they are all certified legends and it wouldn't be fair to them. But I'm gonna do it anyways. Magic at the one, MJ at the two, take your pick at Bird or Pippen at the three, Malone or Barkley at the four, and David Robinson playing the five. Now personally, I'm going Pippen and Barkley at three and four, so not really realistically what would happen if you put that starting five up against this current starting five. Any rational basketball fan's brain goes straight to, man, I'm not trying to hear that. The dream team is getting 2024 squad up out of here with the quickness. But I'm not so sure. And I'm willing to die on this hill alone that not only could the 2024 squad give them a run for their money, but they could actually beat them. Going off the starting five that I gave, and I'm not talking about bench or depth, just 5v5. This 2024 roster can score with the best of them. Five guys that can score from anywhere on the court. Now the Dream Team roster didn't have that, but they make up for it on the defensive side of things. Magic Johnson running the point at 6'9 would be a problem for anybody defensively. Probably why he ended his career with five rings and is considered to many as the greatest point guard of all time. But defensively, I don't even think you would have him guard Steph. I think you would switch him and Scottie Pippen. I would say switch him and MJ, but Steph is going to do a lot of running. Running without the ball, coming off of screens, and with MJ doing the bulk of your scoring, you don't want him gassing himself on defense. So you have Pippen guard Steph, you have Magic guard LeBron, and the other three stay the same. There's holes everywhere on both sides. More specifically with the dream team on offense and Steph Curry being the shortest man on the court by three inches, He's a liability on defense. That's not news to anybody. But with Magic not being your quote unquote typical scorer, I'm okay with him having to work his way down to the paint to do most of his damage on Steph. And as good as a defender as Ant is, it's going to go the exact same way it's gone for literally any other person on the planet that has tried to guard Michael Jordan. On the flip side though, there are mismatches on the other end as well. Mismatches that I think hurt the dream team more than they hurt this 2024 roster. One big one being Charles Barkley. For how dominant as Chuck was and for how big he played, people People forget that he's only 6'6". Kevin Durant is damn near 7 feet. All due respect to Chuck, but he's not doing anything with KD. He's regarded as arguably the best offensive player in league history for a reason. There will forever be KD replicas because that's where the game of basketball is headed. But there will never be another Kevin Durant. A 7 footer, as fluid and athletic as a guard who can score at an extremely high clip from all three levels. The other big mismatch coming at the center position. This is where that generational gap is really prevalent and the two different eras of basketball collide. Because Joel Embiid will be able to guard David Robinson. David Robinson will not be able to guard Joel Embiid. Two of the most dominant big men this game has ever seen, but this is where I believe Joel Embiid separates himself from a lot of 90s big men. And notice I said a lot, I didn't say Shaq. Although Shaq would get that work too, we best believe he's definitely getting his as well. But Embiid has the brute force and post game of a 90 center, while also having the ball handling and shooting of this generation's big man. Not once did Robinson have to guard a guy like that his entire career. So you get Embiid to take the Admiral out to the three point line and it's basically like taking a guy who can't swim very well into the deep end. Again, all speculation, but I don't think it's easy work for the dream team like many believe it to be. And if I'm being completely honest, that 2008 redeem team is probably a tougher matchup for this 2024 squad. Only because you had all five guys in the height of their prime. Whereas this 2024 squad has three guys nearing the end of their legendary careers and one just getting started. In 2008, you had CP3 at the one, Kobe at the two, Carmelo at the three, Bron at the four, and Dwight Howard playing the five. Except in my version, I'm replacing CP3 with Dwayne Wade, who of course was going to come off the bench for Kobe Bryant, but at the time was a top three player in the world and led that team in scoring. Besides the fact that my argument for Embiid stays the same, Dwight would not be able to guard him out in the perimeter. Howard's freakish athleticism makes it harder on defense for Embiid than David Robinson would for the Dream Team. Other than that though, it's not looking too great for this 2024 roster. You're literally getting a younger and more athletic version of LeBron James and a prime scoring machine in Carmelo Anthony. D-Wade, who was given the nickname Flash for a reason, was just about to reach his peak and would be considered one of the best two-way players this game has ever seen. And Kobe is Kobe. 2008, he was still in God mode and coming off his lone MVP title. In fact, I want to take back what I said earlier about them maybe being a tougher matchup. Because ain't no maybe about it. That redeemed team is getting this current roster up out of here. But the exciting part is that we get to see Bron 
LeBron, Steph, and KD suit up and play together for the first time in a game that actually matters. The three biggest stars of the last decade and three basketball legends as they all will put a close to their careers very soon. Something we can't take for granted because we may not see three guys of this caliber teaming up for a very long time. Maybe not ever again, and I feel like an old head saying this, but I just cannot imagine a world where we get to see three top 12 players in league history all play at once and in their prime at the same time. This must be how people in the late 80s and 90s felt watching MJ, Magic, and Bird. But it's true, the league is going to have an extremely hard time replacing them as the face of the NBA. Rising star Anthony Edwards, who is on the team and says he's the number one option, will be in the mix to try and replace them. Him along with Ja Morant, Jason Tatum, and Luka Doncic will have extremely large shoes to fill. Either way, I'm going to be locked in to see how this 2024 team does, because anything less than gold would be a huge disappointment.